This is a second video describing the trim bell program with um, just a little more complexity. Uh, we'll talk about a couple of um, probes and uh, add a second plane and um, look at a real world example. So again we're trying to trim balance some piece of rotating equipment uh, that has an unbalance. Uh, so in this case we're talking about a high speed coupling between a gas turbine and a centrifugal compressor with these uh, axis ports to get to these trim planes and look at the uh, shaft it looks something like this through those uh, access ports so our trim weights are going to go in these threaded holes between the uh, coupling bolts all right so we'll take a look at a real example so this was uh, just late 2019 due to trim balance on a unit um, so the setup uh, I've set up two planes but I'm only using the aft plane so far. I was actually able to accomplish a nice trim balance with just the aft plane, which in this case is the plane closest to the uh, gas compressor. Uh, later in this example, I'm going to turn on this forward plane and start uh, adding some data. The probes, I've just used two probes, uh, bearing number 5X and drive end X. The non-drive end X, the other side of the compressor, uh, really didn't respond much at all, so I could ignore it, which uh, just means less data entry. Also, the Y probes did basically the same thing as the X probes, so again, really uh, didn't add anything to the, uh, to the problem. So I try and keep it as simple as possible, just to minimize the amount of data that I'm uh, uh, managing. I've got uh, pretty good range of weights available to me uh, that I'm going to use for the solutions and the trim weights. So now let's take a, the data, take a look at the data. So I have um, three data points already defined in this problem. The baseline actually had weights already installed in the coupling. So uh, how did I install those weights? Uh, through this trim weight dialog, put the weights in the holes and that calculate the, uh, calculated the unbalance or the uh, weight vector from those weights and that was actually my baseline so we'd done some prior trimming and uh, had some weights previously installed this machine was uh, pretty squirrely so it changed with uh, speed and load and in this example we're actually running at higher power uh, so having to trim again okay so we um, make a guess at uh, some different weights so we're going from 7.7 .7 grams at 98 to 4 grams at 75 by uh, what are we doing we're let's see taking out this 4.3 gram weight in hole number 10 so that was our our change uh, just basically to remove one weight the 4.3 gram that had been in hole number 10 so then our response with that change was a pretty significant drop in vibration level especially on this drive end X so that was a, a good guess things went the right direction not as good as we want but uh, certainly getting there so then we solved uh, this problem so let me turn this off and uh, like it doesn't exist anymore and I solve and it comes up with a solution of 6.3 at 73 with really nice vibration levels on both the both sides of the coupling. So what this is telling you is that you're able to have a, uh, a, a great impact, a great effect on both sides of, the, of this coupling by just applying a trim weight on one side of the coupling. How is that happening? Well, it, it probably is that the majority of the vibration is on this aft side and when we're putting the weights in this particular plane it's uh, close to where the unbalance really uh, that we don't know what it is it actually exists. Imagine if there was a lot of unbalance over here. If we're putting trim weights in here, we're not probably going to have such a nice effect on this side of the coupling. So we're, we're lucky in this problem in that uh, both sides of the machine are responding well to trim weights uh, just in this one side. Okay, so that was our solution with just this data. And so I uh, then tried to hit the 6.3 at 73 so here's what we want in red the solution weight and then we're going to do something with our available trim weights to try and hit that so I'll hit I'll, I'll try solve weights and I guess I didn't have those 3.2's typed into the setup but if I had is that right I'm 
not sure why that's showing up at 3.1 but I'll s select this solution and uh, they were really 3.2's so I'm not sure what's going on there and that's our best solution so uh, those are the weights that went in and sure enough it uh, accomplished a very good reduction in vibration did just what we wanted well a little bit high on the number five side not perfect but really good on the um, uh, driven in the compressor side so let's say it wasn't quite good enough let's say that um, our uh, vibration on the number five was a bit higher than what we wanted so if that was the case now we're probably going to be looking at uh, doing a two-plane trim balance to try and knock down this number five uh, vibration so how we accomplish that we go back to the setup and we turn on the forward plane Oops. So the forward plane is now shown in the data table, but there's no weights in it throughout the whole history of trim balancing. That's because we haven't put any weights in that plane yet, of course. So now we're going to, uh, to do a trial on the forward plane. We'll just, again, take a guess at some weight installation. Let's say three. Oops. 3.2. I have to add the weights here. Well, let's say uh, 3.2 in hole number 9. Just a total random guess. Back to the data. There it is. 3.2 in number 9. Run the machine. Put the notes in and so on. And we get some vibration response. Let's say, let's say it went up to 2.5. Let's say it was a wrong place to put a weight at uh, 30 degrees. And then let's say this one didn't respond much at all which would be nice you hope that's the case but uh, not always so so with this response we uh, had a, a pretty significant change from the previous uh, shot to this one with not much changing on the aft end wonderful there's good plane separation they call that so now we can do a solution since we have um, a trial weight in the forward plane we got enough data to solve for both planes and we'll hit the solve button and the result uh, is perfect with these weights. So then we would uh, add another data point, and now we have two planes to worry about, forward and aft. So we're looking at the forward plane here. We wanted uh, one gram at 81 degrees. Hit solve. Uh, pretty decent, not great solution with uh, two weights there. Remember, you know, it's not much weight, so we're kind of stuck with these larger weights uh, trying to get to a one gram solution. Select that one. So there's our solution for the forward. And now let's go to the aft. And here's what we want to hit. And so solve weights. Yeah, that's a good solution with three weights right there. So then we go install these three weights back to the data table and run the machine and take the data and hopefully it's something close to uh, zeros uh, and then we'd be done. So that's a description of how to do uh, multi-probe, multi-plane balancing.